so you are welcome back so in this video we are going to learn about a yard route so up to now we've not learned how to do routes with react uh, like uh, building a navigation bar or a nav bar so in this video we are going to learn how to do the react nav that will make it load a page without having to refresh so to do that you are going to follow the following steps we are going to install react router dom then after that one we are going to set it up then please note the step that we use there are about three steps then next we are going to define our routes then we are going to use the route then we are going to see how to do use the route param use the route params and that has to do with when you want to make uh, work with dynamic routing they are redirecting to a new route without the link tag so all this we are going to learn in this video so let's begin the first step is you install the you install the react route add-on package so let's do that so i'll go to my terminal again and import npm install react router dom now you might be wondering how do i know how to install this package well i've been using it for some time but if you know the package name you can you can type npm react router dom so it, it, it will show you how to install it and possibly a few example of how to get started immediately so you see npm install react router dom then for now you're not seeing an explanation or you can type how to do routing in react so you're going to see a blog or a reference from the react documentation that will help you to do that so if i click on this first one it's going to also lead you to installing the package so adding route so you see install mm -hmm. react right add on this so that is how i know it so i've been using it for some time but in case you don't know the right component that will do it a, a particular job or you know the name of the component perhaps somebody have told you you can type npm to get a another understanding of how to install and use the package or you can open any other blog so npm install react router dom so we hit that and um, patiently wait for it to install and it's not going to be fast it's not going to waste time because internet seems to be fast so why is installing let's add okay it's not going to waste time let's add some of the things that we we'll need so as a first step to use a react router we need to go to the main we need to go to the main js and this is React router step one. So this is the step one. So what is this step one? Well, the step one is you're going to wrap the app component with a browser router, browser router from React router DOM. So if you don't do this, then it then means React will not know how to inject the page and when it should inject it. So this is the first step. So you save this. Second step is we go to the app component. So we can close some of all these things. Don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need this for now. So what I will do is. 
Okay, let's leave it. Let's leave the rest. So we'll come to the app component. Then we are going to remove all of this. We are going to remove all of this or let's comment it out for now. Then come here we'll add routes so this route comes from serial rata dom so let's add this one before I forget rata step step 2 so this is rata step 2 then the next step is route now this is a singular route then it is a self closing tag then the next I want to add is my path so this is the path and this is our home page so we are going to create a home page for this and the element and the element you want to render when this route is clicked is home so let's create that one so i'll create a component called home so this is the folder first then the file now remember a component will start with a capital letter dot jsx then arrow afce so I'll save that so that I can use it here. So let me go to my app. Then here now I'll call my home. Not that home, just like so. And I can save. So next I'll duplicate this one, two, three. So here I can have my car. So I'll just type my car component. Remember. We have used it before so we can import it so i can simply carry this all of this ctrl c and add here the next we'll move to the cart and i'll name here to be cart the next we'll move to the flower Now name here to be flower. So let's test this now as the step two. Let's test on our browser. So if I go to where is the error? So let's go to our console. Get so let me refresh. Okay, so this is it. So remember that in our route we we specify that the home should hold what a home page. So that is the home page. So if I want to go to my flower, so this means things will not be scattered all again. So I have my card my car so if I do that it it it, it took me to my car I think so that is it if I want to go to my flower you see it takes me to my flower and when I do this see how responsive it is so that is nice so how do we is it is, is this the way we should be using it no so we need to create a component a navbar component and a footer component so let's do that so nav so i'll create a nav.jsx here then i'll also create tap here create your footer 
and your footer dot jsx then now remember let's create another one the error so create another one called error dot jsx now this error will be used for any route that is undefined by us it will just show that default page okay so let's do that so let's go back to oh we've been creating this and we'll not be doing our roa fca now we'll try an error when we try to access the page because it's empty roa fce so remember if you learn something you practice it so that it you will not forget if you forget that will lead to an error okay so we have that now so what will happen now is when you're using a single route like this you can have more but when you're using a single route like this anything that you want to always be displaying at the top for all the pages you put them before the router for the top one and then the one that want always want to be showing below put them below the router i mean below the routes so if i add my nav here my nav which is coming from my nav component and add my footer here which always i want to be which i always want to be done so footer so you notice this is how it looks so here i'm going to have my nav here and my footer so by the time i create my nav banner as we soon do if i tap the routes here you see that for all the pages you see the nav bar and the footer so that is nice so let's complete that by updating our nav bar so i'll come here so excuse me remember we are going to be using external css the css module is good but because of because i i i i, I uh, it wastes time to like type and use so that's why i don't like using it and because i know how to fix that conflicting stuff so that's why i i love using this so i'm going to name this now but you'll be forced to use the the stash between your if you want to dive into app development using react native so you'll be forced to use that okay so here we need an unordered list inside this list we want to have just a simple list we want to have now this is the router step route step 3 so where you want to reference to a particular route you use a special tag called link is unique to react router DOM. now if you use an anchor tag here it will still be even it will still be behaving like a traditional website we are it will have to refresh the page to update the DOM but using this special link tag react will prevent that and still do the work without having to refresh the page so this is important so i'll have here i'll put here my home it's just a simple just a simple nav tag then <coughs> sorry excuse me instead of using the href now i'll use to so remove that uh, add slash so let's do that shift out arrow down one two three so i'll have here my car then here will be my car then I'll have here my cart 
uh, cart and I have here my cart and I have here my flower and here will be my flower so what is happening now so this prettier so this extra things they are just prettier job but that is not important so you see I have this now now if, if I want to go to my car I press this see real does not refresh I press this see real does not refresh I press this real does not refresh so that's it and, and you notice that the number and the footer always remains where they are the same so anything that you don't want, anything that I want to be showing in all the pages add, add them at the top below so if I go to flower now I'm already a flower card so see how fast react is there is no page refresh very nice so the next thing I want to do now is to handle the error so, so let's say I spell this my flower wrongly and I hit enter see it's just going to show this and user will not know why it did not get to the to the right page so let's do that so to do that we'll go back to our routes yeah now it, it, it record that in css we want to target all the tags be it a, a block tag or an inline tag we use the asterisks for global selecting so that is how we, we do that and you always put this below so that if a route request does not match any of this then it you know that is an error and it will pick that so error remember our custom error component here so i choose this one so in our error what do i want to do i'll just type here looks like you mistyped the URL then my link tag Just put the home there <coughs> to and put your slash. So I want this to be at the center. So I'll use an attribute that is unique to React align then center. So if I do this, it will place this at the center. So you see, oops, looks like you mistyped the URL so go home if I press this it will take me to the home page so you see so if I type something that does not exist uh, this notice this will pop off oops looks like you mistyped URL so that is that so let's give this our nav bar some styling so remember we are going to use SAS. So I'm going to add a file there now.scss. Then next thing <coughs> we've given it we've given it an idea of now. So while we are here, let's import the standard style sheet dot and forward slash now. So now if anything we add there will work. So the next thing we want to do is to I think let's close this. We are done with those. Our home, we're not doing anything out there. So let's leave it like this. So I come here now. I'll do my ID now. Then my background color. I want it to be black. Then 
my UL. Next, I need another mixing, which is for grid. So let's do that. Another include, so I can add it anywhere. But I usually like to leave my responsiveness down. So I'll add at. at include no at mixing grid and this is going to um, put the number of of columns that you want so ash so the variable here num so display grid Grid template columns should be repeat then the number of columns I want um, one F arrow then I'm going to have another one called dynamic grid or flexible grid so this I will not have any of this. Then it will have here. Remember our grid auto fit. Then here it will not have the min max function. Then so the minimum I want is two hundred and the maximum should be one F arrow one F arrow so I'll show you the difference between these two now now uh, this one as I add more items to my nav is going to display nicely but this one means at each point in time it's going to only be four columns at a at a, at a go so this one even in the responsive mode it it, it it always be like two two or four four depending on what I pass but this one is going to adjust systematically or automatically so let's use that inside our nav now so let me use the first one so of course we have to import it at include not include imports put dot dot four slash dot dot four slash css include then because the UA holds our allies which is to be flexed so that's why we need to add it here so add include uh, grid grid just just the normal grid then I'll pass in the variable which is let's say I want for now so you notice how it will look like so you see that it's three and 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 the rest is here so if I scroll down you see that it does not break at all it does not break it still remains three forever so it's not responsive so let's leave it like that first let's also handle oh there's lights just a moment, let me off this phone. Okay, so let's so let's target the the li tag and let's also have the anchor tag inside then I'll give it a color of white then font size 
1.3 ROEM font weight bold so if I do that we have this the next let's remove the underline so text decoration none so if I do that I will have this so then let's add a gap here gap 1 out of here which is 16 pixels so that will give it some space between here and here and here and here so you see that this one is not responsive you see you see how it looks so let's use the dynamic one so that is the flexible grid so add include flexible grid so if we add that hoping there is no typing error so let's check the, the, the spelling So I spelled it wrong here. It's put an L here. So that error will be fixed now. So notice this is how it looks like. So you see, as I go, it remains like that. Then let me add another one. So next we can add here. align justify content center so this is so that when it is let's see if it work in responsive mode it should come to the center so let's do and that is align items there's a shortcut that works let me check list items center okay well you see that if we use this okay this is nice so you see how nice it looks like you see it's it's responsive on its own you see very nice okay so that is for that so let's give our navbar a pardon or a mean height of 5 view height so let's see how it looks like now so you see so if I add more content, it's going to stretch. Let's give it a padding. Padding of. So let's use that our spacing. Because you see the same thing. So at extend dot spacing, so that will space the nav bar a little. Oh, and it comes with the border radius. So to do the border radius on set. That's nice. So we see we see how that spacing and this is nice. So we have our now bar now. So you see how it works. Very nice. 
So let's add one more feature on hover, the color should be crimson. So something like red. Hover color crimson. Then text decoration underline. So if we do that, so you notice how it looks like now. Very nice. So this is the flower, this is this, this is this, this is this. So the next thing that I want to learn now is this using route params. So let's say there is a route that is not static but is rather dynamic. For example, let me show you. Let's say I want to go to my blog one and this is my blog details. Sorry, let me shift my chair. So, if I go to this route now, I want you to fetch the blog post for one and lose and load it. So, and I want to be able to get this one that is here, so I can use it as the ID of the blog, as the ID that I will use to fetch the blog, which we will do at the end of or as a project for this video series for week seven. So let's do that now. So to create a dynamic route using the route params, I'll come to my routes below my flower. You can put your routes anywhere. Then blog slash column ID. So this ID here now is the variable that it will store the param. So if I put it as Chile here, I will, I will have to use it as chili. If I put it as slug, as it as slug. So whatever name you put after this column is the variable that we use to get back the params here, which is this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a blog component, which we will soon use. But just for the sake of this class or this video, so blog so let me create a blog component GSS AFCE sorry I was it was meant to be blog details so it's not bad we'll still use them Log details. Excuse me. Then log details. Dot So now we have this. So let's generate the palette. So we have that. So what I will do here now is. I'll just add here blog details. So if I come to my route now and I hit this, you notice it it brings my what my blog details. So next what I will have to do now is this if I want to get this number one that is here. That is the last thing. How do I get that? Well, there is a simple way of doing that. So I'll go to my blog details. I will use the use params hook. So let ID be equal to use params. And I'll have to destructure it, so I'll add a bracket like that. So I'm going to put here a H2 blog details for blog number ID. So it will show me number one, number 
to number three just like that then i'll have some p tag here blurring alt z let's shift this other one okay so we have this now so if i come here i will see this so block details for block number one so if i do this for 44 so i'll see block details for block number 44 so this is this now if if i have now the next thing that i want to learn now is this how to redirect to a route without the, the link tag so that's the last thing we we'll learn for this video so now that blog is now created so let's use it here so i'll create one below and i'll leave it as my blog then i'll load my blog so so let's say i want the person to go back home here so i need a button in my details page so i'll use dot btns that's what i like using then button back so i'm going to put here on click then my anonymous function so let's use the hook for the all the 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 package that comes with the react router done that we can use to dynamically redirect without the link tag so what i'll do here is i'll put redirect is equal to so i'm supposed to put the keyword which is let then I'm going to now put use navigate just like so. So if I want to go back when I click here, I'm going to click this to redirect. So to just run this function, I need to go back to forward slash blog. So if the blog exists, it's going to go back to that place. So you see back, so if I click here, it goes to the block page, which is not, for now, it's not in our route. So if I have to go back to my home, go back to this, go back to this, then if I want to go back, I say my blog slash Chile. See, blog details for blog number Chile. Then go back, you see, I didn't use the link tag so this is how we use we do we do a redirect without the nav link because there are some places where you want to redirect <coughs> for example if a user enters a page that requires the person to log in first so if the person is not logged they want to redirect to the to the sign in or the sign up page so you, you don't have to the person doesn't have to click to go to that place you want to programmatically redirect to that page so that is why there is need for us to now to redirect without the link tag because the link tag is only meant if the user have to click to cause the redirect but when the user does not have to click to cause the redirect <coughs> then there is need for us to use this method so we use this method very soon so that is it for this video and I will see you in the next